different competition of softball heading into this Clearwater tournament. So I think those are two players that we really need to see step up. Auburn comes in at 5-0. and oh. Let's take a look at today's impact players brought to you by Visit St. Pete Clearwater for Auburn. Yes, and Auburn, wow, talk about offense. Last weekend, they were just absolutely unbelievable. And it's Sydney Cox and Michaela Packer that pack a solid one-two punch. And those are two players that we want to highlight and see them step up big in the first game of this tournament. Shelby Lowe in the circle to get this rolling in Clearwater. She is 3-0 on the season. Had a no hitter last weekend, which was pretty incredible for her as a sophomore. She threw a five inning no hitter against St. John's on Friday. Her first pitch of the day is outside and off we go from Clearwater. Leading off for Texas Tech is the catcher Molly Grumbo. Strike call according to our plate umpire Lyndon Baptiste. This four person umpiring crew. You see the numbers on Molly, a senior who was a transfer from Loyola Marymount. That is going to be a common theme for Texas Tech as the staff, their head coach Sandy Ward, came from Loyola Marymount. Shelby Lowe. Last year in SEC play, Shelby Lowe had an ERA under 2, 1.74. That's, that's a shallow right. Bryant, the second baseman, gives way to the right fielder, Lindsey Garcia, and that's the way we get things going in Clearwater. Let's take a look at the lineup written up by second-year head coach Sammy Ward for the Red Raiders, who are wearing their scarlet and black. Rumbo up top, Abby Orrick, who we're going to see now off to a great start. Uh, really, this Texas Tech team comes in at 3-1 after playing uh, four games down in Houston. First pitch swinging, and that ball's towards right center, and racing over Michaela Packer to her left, makes the catch, and a loud out for out number two. And this is just pitch missed a little bit over the heart of the plate. Good barrel on ball. Packer making a great play out there. You love that if you're low in the circle. You want to go out and have a quick inning and kind of bring some momentum into the dugout for the Tigers. Five pitches to get two outs for Shelby Lowe, and she pours in a first pitch strike to the first baseman, Ellie Bailey. like that, no balls, two strikes. Ellie Bailey in her second season with Texas Tech. See the numbers here early this year. She's already hit one out, driven in three. Played her freshman year at South Carolina back in 2020. COVID abbreviated season. That's down the line and right. This could be trouble, but Garcia into the angles it well and makes the catch. And a quick inning there for Shelby Lowe as Texas Tech goes down in order. We'll see the Tigers when we come back. St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson is brought to you by Visit St. Pete Clearwater, Florida and Wilson Fast Pitch, leaders in softball innovation. That pink hotel is the uh, Don Cesar, which I'm not embarrassed to say. I, I never had the coin to stay there because it's <laughs> really upscale. Kendall Fritz in the circle today for Texas Tech. Yes, and she is the most experienced college pitcher on staff. She is a Nevada transfer. She is 2-0 on the season. I love that she's getting the nod today, game one of this tournament. Kayla Packer leading off for Auburn. Texas Tech win in order in the top of the first on eight pitches. Auburn starter Shelby Lowe. Backer gets jammed but pulls it foul. She's off to a really nice start. It's five hits in her first 11 at bats on the air. A couple of those have been home runs. The Chattanooga native. Great year last year as a true freshman. Off speed pitch. 
We get our first combio of the afternoon. Again, trying to keep the hands in, but pulls it just foul. And home run distance, about 15, 20 feet foul in the left field pole. One thing I know about Kendall Fritz in the circle is she can whip that change up in any count, and that's what makes her so dangerous, right? 0 2 1 2 as a hitter, sometimes are the hardest counts, can be unpredictable. Caught her looking as Packer takes strike three. One out. Now that number two, City Hawks. And Mickey Dean, head coach for the Auburn Tigers. His lineup card, of course, has Packer at the top of the order. Sidney Cox batting in the two hole today. Good circle, John. Go get it. It is a 5 0 Auburn team. There is that lineup. We highlight down in the ninth spot Carly McCondishi. He's uh, really off to a hot start. Six for nine, slow roller off the bat at Cox. Barraza up with that, and throws her out. Ana Barraza playing short for the Red Raiders. Now that number 13, Delia Peralta. The two outs base is empty for the Tigers. Here's their shortstop, Nelia Peralta. hitters for the most part have been coming up, taking good hacks right out of the gate, not waiting too much. See Peralta, good eye on that last pitch, but you love it when hitters are stepping in the box, just hacking, especially in that first inning. a bit inside. And Fritz is falling behind. Three balls, no strikes on the true freshman, Peralta. Peralta back in her home state, went to Wellington High School, Wellington, Florida. Four pitch walk. Now, at number 77, Bree Ellis. We have our first base runner of the afternoon. And the Auburn cleanup hitter is up, first baseman Bree Ellis. She is another of the young players for Auburn this year, true freshman. Kendall Fritz, who pitched three years Nevada, 2019 through last year. One of her best pitch combinations is that curveball and that rise ball. And you saw to Peralta that last at bat where she walked her and it was on those curveballs. But the fact that she can go up has the ability to throw that change at any count. Definitely a force to be reckoned with in the circle and has some experience to show for it. Reaching out for that, Ellis hits it down the third base side near the line, and that is caught by the shortstop, Alana Barraza, who comes over by the tarp. Able to stop herself after making a nice running catch. Two out walk to Peralta, a base runner stranded. Nice to see the fans back in Clearwater. Welcome back to the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational. 25th ranked Auburn taking on Texas Tech in what is the second overall game of 40 that are played here in a four-day span. is on an adjacent field, Tennessee and Notre Dame. Battle get out right now. Take a look at that freshman season recap for Shelby Lowe. Yeah, I thought she did such a good job last year and only bringing that experience into season two as a sophomore. CLA transfer Carson Armijo leading off the Texas Tech second. Go 
That'll be low. Through a five inning complete game. No hitter. Back on Friday against St. John's. When she's kind of mid-60s, she's not going to blow you away with the velocity, but it is her movement on her pitches and then that difference in speed, 45-mile-an-hour changeup. So you snap that off a little bit. A little poop, and that's off the glove. Denver Bryant got a little piece of it with the mitt, but it's in the right center field. Do a little official scoring and give that a hit to Harmio to start the inning, and that is a base hit. That's up to Texas Tech, number six, Pete Jackson. Looks like inside part of the plate and this takes it right over Brian's head. And I know my dad used to always say, you touch it, you catch it. And that's one as an infielder you want back because you believe you can make that play. But I got to rule that as a hit as well, Mark. Yeah, that you touch it, you catch it. <laughs> Usually is from somebody who wanted you to catch it to get it out and maybe you didn't. Yeah, my dad was definitely uh, hard on me and my brother with <laughs> overtaking grounders. Hey, you touch it, you catch it, go run. <laughs> and now, uh, listening to your scouting report, you, when you said mid-60s doesn't blow you away, which is true these days, but I remember a day when mid-60s was blowing hitters away in this game. Yeah. Wasn't all that long ago. Well, and especially you really think back to the white ball days at 40 yeah. feet, right? Like the game has definitely changed where you can get away with velocity for sure, but location is key. Jackson fouls it away. Coach Sammy Ward in season two came over from Loyola Marymount. Where she was three-time West Coast Conference Coach of the Year in 16, 18, and 19. Married by the Red Raiders in October of 2020. My husband Randy, part of the staff as well. And they had a strong finish last year at the Big uh, 12 tournament. The win over Texas in the third place game. They're able to miss by PJ, as they call it, Peyton Jackson. And Peyton Jackson had a big hit in that win over Texas in the third place game last year. Knocked in three in that 5 1 win. Takes it outside on the 3 2 pitch, ball four. Low, this is a walk, two on, nobody out. First walk of the season, Shelby Low. That's what I was going to say. I mean, these pitchers are definitely going to get challenged this weekend against competition. No walks last weekend is awesome, but. You're going to find yourself in some uncomfortable, pressure-filled situations just because of this tournament and the feel and those game day nerves. It just, you walk into this ballpark and you really get that, like, wow, we're almost kind of like a World Series or postseason, so you feel that adrenaline. A lot of Barraza, skies one to right center. Packer over to make the catch in front of the track. The lead runner, Armijo, will tag in advance. So Barraza does advance one, and it's first and third, with one out. Now that, second baseman, Ariana Diaz. There was that win over Texas in the third place game. Finished sixth in the Big 12. Let's go, Shelby! Certainly for Coach Ward, just season two, a work in progress. They did get their first win against a ranked opponent in that Texas win first time in a couple of years. It's a program that's been to six NCAA tournaments. The most recent was in 2019. And they went to Baton Rouge. Well, let's see. Armijo is going to tag up. Here's the catch made by Packard. Center of the throw is going to go to second base. It kicks away. And advancing from first to second is Jackson. It's a sack fly RBI for Ariana Villa. Armijo scores. And it's 1-0 Texas Tech. Defensive 
miscues, right? Like, you know she's tagging, you know she's going to make this home, but Packer just has to have a little bit more of a quality throw to Bryant because that runner now gets to advance and is in scoring position. And those are just the little things defensively the first couple weekends out where you really start to kind of figure out the plays that need to be made. I'm scoring that play, but I assume at some point we will see an error assess the Packer on that throw because Jackson was not going to be able to advance attack from first to second without the throw getting away. Here's Riley Ellen, who was the DP today for the Red Rangers. Fouled that off her foot and rolled up the third baseline for foul ball. Admire that 1,000 batting average. <laughs> Riley Ellen, she is one for one. She does have a watch, so she has a couple of plate appearances. They don't stay around for long. Case in point. Strikeout ends the inning. Tech does get a run on the sack fly for Villa, so it's the Red Raiders that draw first blood in Clearwater. The five, six, and seven hitters come up for 25th ranked Auburn in the home half of the second from the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational, presented by Wilson. His head coach, Mickey Dean, who had five terrific seasons as the head coach at James Madison from 2013 to 2017, now in season five on the Plains, Carson. Auburn, Alabama. Get two. Good start, let's go get it. Team last year. Tied for 11th with Georgia in the SEC out of the 13 teams. Into to the regional in Tallahassee. Well, they were beaten by UCF and Kennesaw State. Here is Aubrey Lizenby. To a nice start with four hits in her first eight at-bats. It's a slow roller back past the circle. Peraza trying to charge and come up with it quickly, but can't field it, and Lizenby is on to begin the Auburn second. That is an error charge to Barraza. Look at last year for the Tigers. They're their seventh straight NCAA regional. It's a program that's made 16 tournaments in their history, including the last seven in a row. A couple of women's college World Series back in 15 and 16. Now that home in the 2016 final in City. Smith's going to run it first. Circles, go get it. Amy Smith, freshman, runs at first base for Lizenby, the catcher. The importance for Auburn here to come out in this inning, to just find a way to score a run, knowing that Texas Tech scored last inning. Try to just play the basics of the game, right? You've got that runner on right now. Perfect situation to drop that bunt, advance the runner to scoring position. It's not always the bunt that needs to do that, but as a hitter, the mindset going in when you have a runner on first base with no out, especially knowing that Tech scored last inning, it's like, okay, my job as a hitter right now, especially with this one-two count, is I have to be a tough, tough out and do everything in my power to try to advance that runner 60 feet. C. Garcia off to a good start with the bat. Five for 12. Shots out to a 417 average, four RBIs. She's in her third year. Florida native from Coral Springs. Went to Coral Springs Charter where she won five Florida State titles in high school. One goes. That's hit in the air to deep center field. Light back at the fence and makes the catch back to the wall. Back to first. It was the pinch runner, Abby Smith. Loud out there for the first out of the inning. Now, 
We'll take a look at our women's basketball doubleheader tonight here on SEC Network. Leah Boston, number one, South Carolina, host Auburn at 7 Eastern, 6 Central. And then Texas a and takes on Ole Miss at the Pavilion in Oxford. Both games right here on the SEC Network, as well as the ESPN app. Here's the Auburn DP, Jesse Blaine, who freshman from the St. Louis area, Wentzville, Missouri. Hands and she turned on it hard to foul. Well, and those are the types of swings as a pitcher that you feel, right? Like just the way that Blaine turned on that inside part of the plate. Now, for me as a pitcher, it just kind of, I would have the mentality of, all right, it's going to open up the outside part of the zone. Clearly, she can get her hands inside the ball, quick hands. And Fritz does such a good job of being able to mix pitches, has that changeup, has that rise ball, as, as well as east west with that curve and screw. Blaine graduated from high school in the St. Louis area, but from a military family, really bounced around, spent time in California and the D.C. area. Highly ranked recruit. She was the catcher for the 2019 under-17 Team USA national team. Pitch runner Abby Smith on the move. She steals second base. Smith throw obviously by Grumbo not on the money so no chance to get Smith. Here we call four, five pitch walk to Blaine. And now the Tigers have something going, two on with only one out here in the bottom of the second. When you see the catcher Grumbo going out to talk to Fritz and I like this just to be able to kind of slow the game down a little bit right you got a couple ducks on the pond with one out and really just want to focus as a pitcher and just executing one Not pitch at a time and sometimes the game can speed up and you can feel it your heart starts to pound a little bit more but at the end of the day you just have to work on quality spots and trusting that catcher behind the dish. Stairs to Denver Bryant. Over in second baseman. Now in her sophomore year, playing in 24 games last year as a true freshman. That ball's up the middle and through for a base hit. Rounding third, Abby Smith will score. RBI single for Denver Bryant, her fifth run batted in, and Auburn's come right back to tie the game in the bottom of the second. And Bryant doesn't skip a beat. First pitch of the at-bat, she is coming up, just hacking, takes this right up the middle. You have to love it when the bottom half of your lineup is stepping up. Carly McCondishy fouls the first one and a sliding attempt by Peyton Jackson, the left fielder in foul ground. Raza, the shortstop, was also coming over, but it drops go, strike one. Good circle. Kondashi batting in the ninth spot. Really kind of acts like a, another leadoff batter. She punches this in the air, it's caught. Throw back to first. Gets by via an ill-advised throw. And the lead runner, Blaine, to third. Now going to try to score as that ball's late getting to the plate. And she gets around the tag. And a little pop-up on a bunt that was easily caught. Thought may end the inning for Texas Tech. Instead, they throw the ball around and allow him to go ahead and run to score. And this is one of those plays, as a pitcher, you have to just know the situation. And her delayed pump throw first wasn't there exactly where she needed her to be, and it just wasn't going to happen. And just this little bobble at the end here, 
None of this would have happened if Fritz wouldn't have tried to make that throw to first and double pumped. And Auburn kind of getting some momentum. Welcome those of you that are catching some of our bonus coverage here. From UCF Wisconsin. First pitch is going to come up at 1.10 Eastern time, so about nine minutes from now. So give you a little taste of our Big 12 SEC matchup. Texas Tech and Auburn. Texas Tech just scored a run in the top of this second inning, but Auburn has come back thanks to two costly Texas Tech errors. Taking a 2-1 to one lead. Top of the order is back up for Auburn and Michaela Packer. Started this inning. Throwing air by the pitchers, so there's been a couple of costly miscues for Texas Tech. Last weekend, Texas Tech had four errors on the weekend, and that's really where you start to kind of figure it out. Those first couple weekends out just Sometimes some things can happen, errors can happen, but we all know clean defense, defense wins championships. You have to be able to make those plays, make those quick decisions. Packer lays down a punt, up with it, or it goes to first. And in time, nipping Packer to win the inning. But the Tigers with two runs on only one hit and two errors cost Tech. Yeah, the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational. Here at the Eddie Seymour Complex. Clearwater, Florida. Leading up the Eddie's are 23, Peyton Live. A couple of unearned runs for Auburn in the bottom of the second, so we head to the top of the third. Texas Tech will have the nine, one, and two batters up. Leading off center fielder, Peyton Blythe. Shelby Lowe there, a little frustrated with that last pitch. Her being a southpaw, that lefty-lefty matchup is a goodie. And she can spin that curveball going into the right-handed batter's box. And as a lefty, sometimes it's really challenging to face lefties because you just don't get to see them as much as right-handed pitchers. Blythe gets under it. It's a high fly to right center. Lindsey Garcia has that measure. One out at the top of the third. Next up, number 21, Molly Rumbo. So once through the order for Shelby Lowe has allowed one run. Just one hit. One strikeout, one walk. First pitch swinging and Molly Grumbo rips it past the third baseman Sidney Coxon into left. Grumbo with a one out base hit. Good piece of hitting on the inside part of the play. Just turns on it. Solid lead off by Grumbo. Abby Oric. It went sharply but lined out to center in her first at bat. Four hits on the year. One of those is a home run. Yeah, Grumbo at first. She's a catcher, but already has three stolen bases on the year. Pass the third base coach, Randy Ward, husband of head coach Sammy Ward. There's Randy who handles the hitters. And he's also on the staff at Loyola Marymount with wife Sammy. Go up 
after it, and that strikeout is the second of the game for Shelby Lowe, the second out of the inning. It's a big strikeout, go to count, just climbs the ladder, almost made it look pretty dang easy. As a hitter sometimes too, the first couple weekends out, you're just starting to get a feel for what those pitches are looking like, how they're spinning, deciphering the difference between that rise spin, curve, curve spin, ball down in the zone. She climbs the ladder well there. Ellie Bailey. Glad to ride her first time. The umpires called Grumbo leaving early at first base. And that is why and the inning is ending. Daily game schedule, scores, and tournament news. Make sure to check out our website for everything you need to know. Also, you can share your photos from today's event on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram using hashtag. So that SCC takes us to the invite. midpoint of the third. 2-1 Auburn. Home half of the third. Auburn leading Texas Tech 2-1. Two, to two, three, and four hitters up. And Sydney Cox leads off for the Tigers. And the top of the inning ending. Molly Grumbo left first base early before the ball left the hand of Shelby Lowe. So that was the third out of the inning. Here we go, Sid. Quickly, no balls, two strikes on Cox. A couple back to back quality pitches, just jam job on the inside part of the corner, throwing that curveball, just letting it ride. Turns on it and pulls it deep but foul down the right field side. Sydney with a ground out to short in her first at bat. Eight for 15 now on the season. He has a homer and is knocked in seven. Once again, Fritz keeping it down in on the hands of Cox. Change of speeds comes in again, but gets the strikeout. Second of the game for Fritz. So let's go back to the conclusion of the top of the inning when the runner leaves early. Grumbo. And you saw the ball, and you saw her leave the base before that ball was released. And that rule is the pitcher has to release the ball before you're able to be off that bag. And Grumbo, hey, you ain't cheating. You ain't trying, they say, Mark, but sometimes the umpires get you. Yeah, first base umpire Dan Rodgers, you can see him put out his left arm. So he had the call right there. And that's went into the top of the inning. Pitch a strike to Peralta. And we're able to walk back in the first inning. Freshman Nelia Peralta. There's the off-speed pitch again and a strikeout. Two down. Now, coming up tomorrow, our gymnastics doubleheader starts with number two Florida in Lexington, taking on number 10 Kentucky at 6 Eastern, 5 Central. Then number seven Auburn squares off against Georgia Friday night heights right here on the SEC Network in the ESPN app. Ball one for tied to Ellis. Three Ellis. Now give me two that way, too. And if I'm an Auburn Tiger hitter, I'm looking at Cox's at bat and Peralta. Both strikeouts on that filthy changeup, and now Ellis with 0-2. That has to be in the back of your mind as a hitter. 
knowing that Fritz can just drop that pitch off the table, takes a lot of speed off it. Kendall Fritz strikes out the side in the Auburn third. When we come back to Clearwater, we'll have an opportunity to chat with the Texas Tech head coach, Sammy Ward. I sure can. We welcome you back to Clearwater. Hey, Coach, we just got you uh, all mic'd up. Head coach Sammy Ward at Texas Tech. Let me start. I'm not going to ignore the uh, three strikeouts that you, you just got defensively, but let me start with your hitting, what you've seen so far from your offense. Um, I, I feel like we're doing a pretty good job of being on it right now. We just got to be disciplined to make sure that we're swinging at what we want, uh, particularly the down pitch. Coach, two things. I wanted to know if your two sweet little daughters are here. And then second, I just wanted you to talk a little bit about Fritz. Obviously, two unearned runs, but she seemed to settle in with the back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back K's last inning. My daughters are not here. My mother flew into Texas from Oregon. She's watching my girls, so I'm sure she's watching this game right now as well. So hi, Mom. Hi, Riley. <laughs> hi, Haley. Um, in terms of Fritz, she's a competitor. I mean, she's been such a great addition to us. Um, you know, we just had a little talk in here as a team before she went out, and it just fires her up, and she fires us up. So she did settle down, but she um, she started out pretty well as well. Just a few miscues there on defense, but we'll be fine. Um, we play real well behind her because she's got a great competitive presence for us. I always like it when moms can say hi to the kids back at home. Thanks, Sammy. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Appreciate the time. You always have to ask about daughters. Well, that's great. And I mean, how special that those little ladies back at home get to see these women compete and be around them. And that was a big reason as to why I wanted to live in Washington near my alma mater, because I just think it's so important for, you know, little girls to have women role models and to be able to be around the game and it just feel natural to go into a locker room. Well, it's great that women athletics, not just softball, but women athletics in general, in general, have taken giant steps forward over the last couple of decades and hopefully continue to do so. Mm -hmm. Bailey leading off for Texas Tech. This is the top of the fourth. Tech scored a run in the top of the second. Auburn got two unearned runs in the bottom of that same inning. Importance for low to go out there, especially after that quick inning from Fritz with the three Ks that can get a lot of momentum going for a team. So for her to go out there and try to hit good quality spots and get Auburn back in the dugout. Really has worked this to a full count, three and two. Pitch of the at bat coming. Shelby Lowe. And there will be a night. Bailey sends that out to short, a one hopper off the glove of Peralta. And Bailey is aboard. An interesting scoring decision. That ball was hit pretty well. It was almost right at Peralta, but it gave her a very short hop, a tough hop. Yeah, this was just an absolute missile. Took that funny hop. And calling this tournament two years ago in 2020, I remember seeing some stuff happen on this field up the middle in that shortstop position. He's trying to get a good grasp for like what that dirt's going to be like. It's going to be really fast off the bat. When you haven't got a chance to play on that field, sometimes first couple innings you're really feeling it out. On the runner, here we go, here we go. Demi Elder is going to run at first base for Bailey. They have scored that in error. And I know a lot of times when a ball is hit very close to a defender and they don't feel that they give an error. I'm not the official scorer, but I like to take into account how hard a ball was hit. And for me, that ball was hit hard enough 
it made it more difficult of a play. It made it non-routine. I would have given that a hit. That's a foul ball, dead ball. When I think if you were to ask Peralta at short, like, do you think you should have made that play? She's going to say, heck yes, yeah. all day. Because, I mean, they're gamers. In those moments, they think I'm, I'm able to step up. And sometimes those rockets are hit and just not able to get to it. But that definitely was a liner. I think that she could have got it, but it could have went either way. I want my shortstop to feel that way <laughs> yeah, all day. I know. And five times on Sunday. That's chopped towards second. Denver Bryant's going to take the out at first. Gave a look, but let the uh, runner elder was on the bases for Bailey. Got a good jump. She's down at second. Auburn retires a tough hitter in our Miho. Here's the five spot. Peyton Jackson. Tex had a couple of opportunities with runners in scoring position. They're 0 for 2 so far today. Peyton with a walk in the second. for two with runners in scoring position, but with an RBI because one of those was a sack fly. Not in their run in the second. That last pitch, that curve ball breaking away, and that's a bread and butter pitch for Shelby Lowe. Snapping it away from those lefties. Rest off the outside edge there. You can see her kind of shaking her head in frustration. And I feel you, sister, right? Like sometimes as pitchers, we work so hard on quality spots. We don't want to throw the ball over the heart of the plate or really any part of that white plate because hitting has gotten so good. But the best part about pitching is you have to endure those different types of scenarios and find ways to deal with it. And a lot of pitchers like to be that poker face, show no emotion. A lot of pitchers will show that emotion. And, and Shelby Lowe's a, a relatively young player still, a sophomore, and she's, she's showing her emotions. She, you can definitely tell by her body language she's not happy with some, some calls on those pitches. Well, listen, yeah. well, the girl to your right right here used to do that, and the sooner that I learned that it, you don't get the pitches, <laughs> The more I learned, I can't show up the umpire because it's not, I'm just not going to get that call. It's down the left field side. Wakanda, she comes in to make the catch. It's going to keep Elder in second, two outs. I guess I think you developed what I would call the Daniel Laurie death stare. You didn't have to shake your head. <laughs> you could just laser lock in and just kind of look at an umpire and get your message across. Okay, but I will say this, that communication with the catcher and to be able to say, like, I would take my frustration out on them in the dugout, not in a nasty way, but like, hey, is there any way you can keep trying to fight for me getting that pitch? Like, keep talking to that umpire behind the plate for me because that communication between the, the catcher and the umpire is important. That runs in and hits Alana Barraza. So Tech now with two runners on with two outs here in the top of the fourth. I'm sure no catcher at any point when you ask them, hey, can you do a little bit more to help me with, with, with some calls? None of them said, no, nah, I've pretty much done everything I can. Just... I mean, they're, to me, they're the most <laughs> selfless players on the field because yeah. they've got to deal with oh. us and manage the defense and call the pitches. Well, you got to have pitching to win in this sport, but for me, other than that, the most important player is catcher. Yeah. I mean, you need pitching to win, but if you don't have someone that can tame that beast in the circle that can really slow the game down and help, I mean, it, it's not looking good for a, a heavy postseason run. I mean, it gets overlooked all the time, catching. But if you don't have a good one, it's a glaring, obvious weakness. Yeah. Especially, like, when I think of a lot of pressure that pitchers have felt and what I've felt over my career, like the biggest things that are able to calm me down 
calm me down besides a focal point at the park is just being able to lock eyes with my catcher and take a breath and know that it's a two against one mentality all the way. Well, low comes back, gets the strikeout, and gets out of the jam. An error and a hit bats hit batsman and a couple of runners left on by Texas Tech. Well, when we come back, we will have the home half of the fourth. Auburn leads it two to one. Hey, welcome back to the 2022 St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson. It is a 2-1 lead for Auburn. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Opportunity to visit with a fifth-year head coach of the Auburn Tigers, Mickey Dean. Hey, I'm going to steal my partner, of course, outstanding pitcher. I'm going to steal the pitching. Shelby Lowe looked a little frustrated there on a few non-calls. What did you see? Because she came back and battled and got out of the inning. Yeah, well, I can't tell in and out. I can only tell height. So if they're outside, I can't tell you that. Um, you know, just working to be sharp there. Coach, last weekend you guys had a heck of a weekend, scored a lot of runs. What was the message heading into this tournament, especially knowing competition was going to be a little bit better than it was last weekend? Uh, play the game, not your opponent. Uh, the game really doesn't change no matter who you're playing. It just sometimes gets a little faster, but uh, play the game. We know what we're supposed to do as hitters and um, defense, so just play the game. Love it. Hey, I, I, I want to go back real quickly. I wasn't trying to get you in trouble with uh, umpires right out of the shoot here in the tournament. <laughs> but but I, I will ask, I was just kind of getting at Shelby's attitude, kind of what you saw, that bulldog mentality to just bear down and get out of that inning. Well, she's always had that mentality. You, you know, she was born with it, I guess. So she's a tough kid. Absolutely. Appreciate the time. Thank you, Coach. War Eagle. Mickey Dean. His Tigers lead a 2-1 bottom of the fourth. I don't want to get people in trouble the first game in. You know, start complaining about zones hey, and stuff. I knew, I knew where you were going with it. So. <laughs> Tigers. Lindsay Garcia. Fly to center field here first time up. Hit it well. Run down by Peyton Blythe. Ripped foul on the third base side. Here we go, Lindsay. Let's go, Mike. I think that both these pitchers have done such a good job of just battling, finding ways to keep executing, throwing great pitches, getting out of jams. Looks like it is playable on the infield and in fair ground. The third baseman takes control as Abby Oric makes the catch. We got a little bit of a breeze that's blowing from left to right. They may have pushed that somewhat towards the first base line as Oric at third called it, made the catch on the first base side of the infield. You cannot complain about the weather. Tip, strike one on Jesse Blaine, the DP. Blaine with a walk and a run scored in the two run. Auburn's second inning. Right back near the screen. And it's going to get in amongst our spectators. Full house. Fritz in the circle right now, looking at Blaine's swing on that first pitch, that rise ball up in the zone. I got an 0-2 count. Wouldn't mind climbing the ladder a bit, little bit, seeing if I can get her to chase something. Stays no balls, two strikes. That's the thing sometimes, Mark. I feel like a lot of times coaches and pitching coaches call games so, so it can take the thinking out of it for the pitcher, which in my mind, we're the ones that see those swings. We see the hacks and how they look. want to take the thinking out of it for the pitcher. We always want them to be the one that's ultimately in control. So whether or not someone else is calling your pitches, the ability to shake that off and throw what you feel in your gut in the moment, because you have to live with it. I assume from a very young age, 
you basically were calling your own game, you and your catcher. Mm -hmm. Did that ever stop at, at any point? No. That's all that I've ever known. I mean, it definitely has evolved in the college game where pitching coaches are calling games a lot more. It's driven to left. It sends Peyton Jackson back to the fence, and it gets out. First collegiate home run for Jesse Blaine. A solo shot to left, and it's 3-1 to one Tigers. to feel good if you're a freshman, huh? Your first home run of the season. Pretty special. Those are little memories you just, you'll never forget what it feels like. Wow, this had a lot of hang time. The tone in your voice changed because you're like, oh, is it a pop-up? No, no, it has some time. And then that just snuck over Jackson in left field. Well, off the bat, it looked like she got under it just a hair. But it just kept on going to left. And Jesse Blaine, her first collegiate home run. Denver Bryant, a sophomore. Single home run, her first time up. When Bryant swagger, you just kind of feel it. And she grew up playing baseball and made that switch late in the game. And just kind of has that like aura and confidence. And I love it. My little girl plays baseball, and I think it was and is really cool to see those girls compete with the boys and then find that time to switch over because it totally is possible to play baseball and switch. Over to softball. Foul tip into the mitt of Grumble. That is a strikeout. But Auburn adds on with Jesse Blaine's first collegiate home run. And after four, it's 3 1 Tigers. Back in Clearwater, let's take a look at today's game track brought to you by Wilson. We take a look at how this game has gone. Fritz, five strikeouts. Shelby Lowe has stepped up and done some damage when there's been pressure on in some key situations. And for Auburn, you see those top four batters, 0 for 7, the rest, those three runs. And Auburn leads 3 to 1 here. Shelby Lowe going back to work. She will throw to a new catcher now as Aspen Godwin. Takes over behind the plate for Auburn. And the low pours in, strike one to Riley Ellen, the DP for the Red Raiders. Riley, a strikeout victim her first time up. Shoots this one in the air towards right center field where Lindsey Garcia then had to back up late on that. Able to make the catch for the first out. Coming up Monday night, our next SEC inside grants you an all-access pass to the Georgia Lady Bulldogs women's basketball program. Special time at 10.30 Eastern, 9.30 Central. And then it's a look at the number two ranked Auburn men's team. You'll get never before seen footage sound from players and coaches as well. And that behind the scenes look only here on the SEC Network. And on the S8. It's called the ESPN app, by the way. Ah. Yeah, I did get took me a minute to spit that out. <laughs> Peyton Blythe has fly to right 0 for 1. Check swing, they're gonna ask for an appeal. Will be some pyre. James Colsey says she did not go around. Takes a strike. Lefty lefty battle here. Wow, 
I, now in her senior season, hits one out to medium center field, Michaela Packer. Is it out number two? Takes us back to the top of the order from Texas Tech. The Red Raiders catcher, Molly Grumbo. Two quick outs for Shelby Lowe in the circle. We love that as a defense when the pitcher is able to try to get you in and out pretty quick. Rumble has a hit today. It's her first, uh, her last time up. Also has flied to right, one for two. Rumble is one of those that spent time with the staff of Sammy Ward at Loyola Marymount. In fact, she just transferred in as a grad transfer this year after playing four seasons at Loyola Marymount. Played 176 career games at Loyola Marymount. 175 of those were starts. We've seen that happen at times quite a bit when a head coach moves to another program. I remember seeing it a lot with Trish Ford from Fresno State going to Arizona State. And you saw a lot of those women transferring over to want to play for that head coach. And can you blame them? Like, you think about this whole process, right? You're choosing this school, and on top of the list is, like, that connection with that coach. And they supposedly bring the best out of you, and you want to play under them. and. That's why they have a lot of transfers from Loyola Marymount. I'm going to get out of play. Grumbo, who I mentioned, a base hitter last time up. So she's reached base safely. Either a hit or a walk in all five games now that Tech has played. Only player on the roster to have done so. Rumbo's game is what she does behind the plate. Last year started all 43 games for Loyola Marymount. And she threw out 11 of 24 runners attempting to steal. So just under 50%, which is an outstanding number for a catcher. It's going to fade foul and out of reach of the right fielder Garcia. a Southern California native from La Palma, California, there in Orange County. He's going to see a ninth pitch in this at bat. You expect nothing left, or less, excuse me, of your fifth-year senior in the leadoff spot. Just absolutely battling ninth pitch of the A.B. She has fouled off six straight pitches. And now you can make that seven. Well, we'll see what the outcome is of this at bat for Grumbo. But however it does, it's been a quality bat for just the number of pitches you see. Here comes the tenth pitch of the at bat. Puts it in play. In the air on the infield, Denver Bryant, second baseman. Able to snag it to retire the side. Lowe sets him down in order. She has set down the last four in a row for all. Hey, here's our women's basketball doubleheader tonight here on SEC Network. Aaliyah Boston, number one, South Carolina, host Auburn at 7 Eastern, 6 Central. And then Texas A&M takes on Ole Miss at the Pavilion in Oxford. Both games here on SEC Network and the ESPN app. That's not exactly War Eagle, but it's pretty close. I saw the talents in the beak. I think that majestic creature has a nest. One of the uh, light tires. There's a ball. Oh, the first pitch hit to the second baseman, Oriana Villa. One pitch, one out. Yeah, I think that's where the nest is. Our crew is so on the ball, they, they really found the nest. I mean, you're on the ball. You're scouting that from here. Did you have your binoculars? I, I did bring binoculars <laughs> for this. 
when you have 11 games in four <laughs> days, you may as well have them. You never know when they're going to come in <laughs> never handy. Know. Off speed pitch, swing and a miss by Packer. You're making fun of my binoculars, aren't you? No, I think they're, I know how much you call football. And being up in that booth, you can't see. They've got to get those numbers tied in there. <laughs> yeah, sometimes at football games, we're in a different area called at the top of the stadium. And it can sometimes be like, feel like five degrees outside. Yeah. Instead, here we are watching great softball. And there's a ball dropped into right center field by Packer. Good play. Wide the holder to a one out single. So you got great speed at first in Packers. Sidney Cox, the hitter, rounded out and struck out today. Even with that, she's eight for 16 on the season, hitting 500. Talking about Grumbo the last inning, she threw out 11 to 24 would-be base dealers with LMU in the West Coast Conference last year. But she may be uh, tested right here. Back to last year, led Auburn with 16 stolen bases. She was not caught. Surprised she didn't have more. So much speed in that leadoff spot. Rumbo knows all about her. She's paying close attention. Well, Packer. She won state championships in high school in softball, but also she was in track. 100 meter, 200 meter. Call on the 3 0 pitch. Packer is going, and that ball is dropped into right field for a hit. Packer picks it up that it's in right center, and she scoots over to third. So Sydney Cox with her first hit of the game. And the Tigers have runners at the corners with one out. I'm not sure if this was a hit and run or a clean steal, but Packer was going all the way. Has to turn back a little bit just to see if this was caught, but gets to third right away. A big situation here for the Tigers to really seal the deal here if they're able to get a couple more runs. First and third situation. Dean brought the lineup card out to plate umpire Lyndon Baptiste. And he's going to bring in Kelsey Schmidt to run for Cox in first base. Dean goes through the sides and he has the three hole hitter up, Melia Peralta. Field defense for Tech. You see the defense here via second base really in understanding first and thirds, add a little bit more pressure as that runner can try to get into a pickle, head into second base, and then that opens up for third to try to get home. So sometimes it can be an absolute disaster, especially the first couple seasons, or excuse me, weekends into the season. You can really test the defense. Now, Texas Tech committed a couple of errors in the second inning that allowed Auburn's two runs to score. They're both unearned runs. Hold foul. Also, a very highly ranked recruit out of Wellington High School here in Florida. Played in the 
It's basically the high school All-American game. He was the MVP of that game. It's that ball back up the middle and just out of reach of Villa. It scores Packer from third base. And Peralta with her seventh RBI of the year, and Auburn has opened up a two-run lead. Mariana Villa at second base, We're very close to coming up with this ball. Peralta is towed up on that line. That ball misses a little bit too much over that plate, and she's able to just hammer it right back up the middle. And I thought maybe Villa stood a chance because she was in and a little closer to the bag, but another insurance run for Auburn. They're going to make a pitching change for Olivia Reigns. So that is all for Kendall Fritz, who goes four and a third innings. So with the tech pitching change, we'll step aside for a quick timeout. Oklahoma transfer Olivia Reigns makes her third appearance of the season out of the Tech bullpen. I think it's important to make a change in this situation, especially for Texas Tech. You want to try to scratch and claw to get back in this game. You want to eliminate any more runs. And I think, honestly, for Reigns coming into this game right now, it's doing exactly that, finding ways to hit good spots. And there's the junior, Kendall Fritz, and that is... Her day, four and a third, five hits, four runs, four of those are earned. Found ways to get herself out of some jams, but some errors and things got a little out of hand earlier in the game. The runners at first and second, still only one out. They got the leadoff batter in the inning, but since then three in a row have reached, including Packer who's already come in to score. takes down low. Three today with a pop out to short and a strikeout. And Olivia Reigns in the circle is primarily down in the zone. Has that true drop spin rotation. That 12 to 6 spin so everything's going to be primarily down and as a hitter that's what your mentality needs to be. She's not coming up in the zone much but how can I get on top of that drop ball? Fly to left. This ball's hit deep, and it is out of here. A three-run home run for Bree Ellis. It has now been a four-run inning. And on a one-two pitch, Ellis takes reins over the left field fence. Exactly what I was going to say, Mark, right? Like, when we have 0 2 1 2, we never want to have anything too sweet, and that baby's left over the white of the plate and against hitters at this level. They're going to execute, and that's exactly what happens. And wow, that does feel good if you're Ellis, or Ellis, excuse me, a freshman, big three run home run, just feeling a lot of confidence in that situation, and that just continues to carry over now at bat into at bat. Pretty special moment. So now a six run lead for the Tigers. Base is clean with one out for Aubrey Lizenby. Actually, that is Godwin, who stayed in the game as catcher, and took that spot in the batting order for the original starting catcher, Lizenby. First to bat of the game for Aspen Godwin. Aspen, who started most of the games last year, behind the plate for the Tigers. 47 games, 43 starts. One home run this year, and Aspen led Auburn with five homers a year ago. That's it.
Grounded foul outside of first. This is cool to see for this Auburn offense, right? Like 22 home runs in all of last year. And you already look at last weekend with them hitting eight home runs and then adding another two today. It just kind of goes to show. And I know they really talked about the work that they've done in the weight room just kind of help continue to build that power and bridge that gap. And it's come to show the last two weekends with 10 home runs compared to 22 that they had all of last year. Well, you think back to the teams for Auburn. There's strike three for the second out. First, let me remind you that Monday night, 7 Eastern, 6 Central, here on the SEC Network and the ESP and AF, we have a three and a half hour recap of this year's men's and women's swimming and diving championships. Florida Gators have won the last nine titles on the midside, while the Kentucky Wildcats, the defending champs, on the women's side. Mickey Dean to his lineup card. He's going to go to his bench. Paige Garrity is going to get a chance to bat here. Let's get back to the thought about Auburn. You know, the years when they were going to Omaha, you know, they went, had three consecutive Super Regional appearances, went to two consecutive Women's College World Series. I mean, those were teams that offensively had a lot of power. Going back to the Jay Rhodes days, Casey Cooper. Let's go, Paige! They, they had some pop. And that was right when Clint Myers kind of came into that program, and all of a sudden they were in the national championship in Oklahoma City. And I just remember being like, wow, Auburn, him continuing to help build that program up. And obviously now Mickey Dean is there, but they have that ability to, to be a team that can get far in the postseason and listen championship teams are built in in September they're not built in February when season starts it's that grind you do as a team with lifting and running conditioning tests being mentally challenged on every level possible Garrity slowly back towards the circle and Reigns throws her out what a big inning for Auburn as they score four times three coming on the Bree Ellis home run Well, let's check the upcoming games with our schedule update brought to you by Wilson. This is day one of four. There's 40 total games, but let's pick out four for you. Later today, SEC-ACC matchup between Tennessee and Florida State, 4 Eastern on ESPNU. Also on ESPNU tomorrow early, 10 a.m. Eastern, we have the Wolverines against the Cowgirls. And then also later Friday, Washington taking on Tennessee and Texas, Florida State. Those three games all tomorrow. Eddie Pinta has come in to take over in the circle for Auburn. You're going to see a little bit of a difference between Shelby Lowe and Maddie Pinta. Obviously, one's a righty, one's a lefty, but Pinta can pump up that velo, can touch upper 60s. I've seen her hit 70s at times. Two, three, and four hitters for Tech. Abby Warwick is leading it off. Trying to catch up to 68 miles per hour. Maddie started the season opener on Friday against Seton Hall. Went seven, gave up two earned runs, four hits, a complete game win. Walked one, struck out 16 through 112 pitches in the season opener for Auburn. Came right back the next day on Saturday through five innings. Got a complete game shutout, a run rule game against St. John's, and then threw against UMass Lowell Sunday. A couple innings early. The ball's going to be dropped into left field, served there by Abby Orr. She's on with a leadoff single for Texas Tech. Penta has come on. 
Lead by a leadoff hit by Oric. He now will face Ellie Bailey. He's getting it up there, upper 60s. Well, now that pitch is that fastball. That's where she's able to get the most velocity, anywhere from 67 to 71 miles an hour, and just that true fastball. And then she serves 56 miles per hour changing. I mean, that's a tough difference, right? Going from 68 to <laughs> that's unfair. 56. That's why a changeup, regardless of how hard you throw or don't throw, is a great pitch. Very rarely do you see pitchers at the highest level, especially when you get to Oklahoma City, that don't have really that true change. You see the umpire going to Mickey Dean, and the umpire was just talking about he had moved his hands in and out for Penta. And as a pitcher, once you close your hands on that ball, you're not allowed to take your hand out and put it back in. Once you seal the deal, you have to go straight from that. and two strikes on Ellie Bailey. <laughs> Texas Tech came into this game three and one. They played four games, all were in Houston. They beat Texas San Antonio a couple of times. Beat Houston once and then lost to Houston once. Came in at three and one. On the third base side, behind the bag, the shortstop wants it in full territory. Maria Peralta, that's the first out. Yeah. Make it a miss for Carson O'Neill. We're trying to start the season 6-0. They hosted a tournament at their place, beat Seton Hall a couple of times, beat St. John's twice, beat UMass Lowell. Four of five of those games were one with five innings. That's in the dirt. And Miles worked to scoot down to second. ball that is charged and allows Oric to advance. That change for Penta really is a good hit. She's getting these Texas Tech hitters to just take crazy hacks. I'd like to see her utilize that, but maybe go up in the zone a little bit more, especially 0-2-1-2. And listen, velocity is great. And if you have the ability to throw hard and locate, it's plus plus. But if you throw hard and, and you can't really control at times where it's going, those 0 2 1 2 counts can be dangerous. I just love how much her body, like, she can really fool those hitters with that difference in speed. You're not able to detect much from her body, doesn't slow it down much. Strike three on the outside corner as Penta gets her first strikeout in this relief appearance. Well, seven innings is the weekly softball podcast ready to chronicle the road to the Women's College World Series. ESPN personalities cover the sport all season long. They'll shine a spotlight on the teams and players that make this great sport so special, entertaining Oklahoma City and beyond. We're on the uh, most recent edition of the I wasn't actually able to go on Tuesday. It's just you know, oh, you weren't. so I was over in Maui. Uh, not to oh, brag. Oh yeah. Not okay. to brag. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. The vacation. Not sorry. To the 
exact opposite side of the country than we are right now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm sure at some point your knowledge will be needed on the podcast. Had a little uh, equipment issue there. Forgot it. Peyton Jackson. Walk and his fly to left, so officially 0 for 1. For those of you Texas Tech fans, they will play again in a short time from now, and Danielle and I will have a call on that. Texas Tech will play, play Clemson. That's scheduled for a 3.30 Eastern time start. Right now it's a six run lead for Auburn. Tech looking for a hit with a runner in scoring position for the first time today, they're 0 for 5. Flip side of that, Auburn three for five with one in scoring position. Denver Bryant was wanting the catcher. Godwin throw second to try to get Oric. Passion comes out even with a six run lead late in the game. No straight three on the outside corner. Warwick is stranded at second. It is a six-run lead. Welcome back to the 2022 St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson. We're looking at Field 9 at the Eddie Seymour Complex in Clearwater. Here's what is ahead later today to start out with Tennessee, which is the only team that's posted a win so far. They beat uh, Notre Dame 11 3 early. They'll take on Florida State in the tomorrow. You got Michigan, Oklahoma State, and then your alma mater, Washington. You get a chance to see Heather Tarr's team. Well, here is Maddie Keel. She's one of three freshmen on the staff for Texas Tech, and she makes her collegiate debut. And I like this little change. I mean, why not when the score is 7 1? Just kind of get some experience for those pitchers out there. Fly ball out to center, it's into the glove of Peyton Blythe. I mean, the Texas Tech has a lot of depth Nine as far seven. as pitchers. I mean, they have six pitchers that they can go to, and I, I do believe this, that pitching plays a huge factor for sure, but it is very rarely do you just see a one-arm show these days. Like, you have to have a solid two pitchers that can get you there, that can allow a pitcher to get a little bit of rest. And I'm wondering this year if we see a little bit more teams at times pitch by committee a little bit. Just offensively, we know some teams can really swing it. And it's hard to face an offense three to four times through a lineup. A flare out towards shallow right. The shortstop going out. Bryant, that's off her glove. And into third base, went off Via's glove. Just like that, standing at third is Denver Bryant. Tough chance, we'll see how they score that out right field as Via was able to get him in on it. Mickey Dean has brought the lineup card out once again. I mean, that's right, Fields ball all day. Arneho needs to make a call, especially with her running in, right? Like, I still think she would have been able to run in a little bit more and make that play. It's hard for Via, who's going backwards with the side angle. If you're an outfielder and you believe that you have the speed to get you to that ball, your eyes are on it all the way. Would have been a heck of a grab by Via, but I think that's right fielder's ball. Does go as a triple for Denver Bryant. Her second triple of the season. Pinch hitter here. Riley McNeemer. 
Let's get out of Galena High School in Galena, Kansas. And again, the Kondashi spot. That lead runner, lone runner, Bryant down at third. It's a good job by Grumbo behind the plate, especially with that 0-2 count on that last pitch down in the zone. Blocks it. And skips the strikeout, two gone. Should say Keel gets the strikeout. That's in the air out to short right. And this time Ormeo pulls her off and makes the catch to retire the side. Last chance for Tex. 7-1 Auburn after six. St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson is brought to you by Visit St. Pete Clearwater, Florida and Wilson Fast Pitch, leaders in softball innovation. I will admit I spent some time on St. Pete Beach yesterday. It's delightful, always fun to go over to the beach. We are happy to be here at the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson. Last chance for Texas Tech. Bad in the top of the seventh. 7-1 seven Auburn, seven unanswered runs for the Tigers after Tech scored the game's first run in the top of the second. Good blow for Auburn. Jesse Blaine home run and a three-run home run from Bree Ellis. There's a lot of Barraza leading off. It's the six, seven, and eight part of the order. Facing Maddie Pinta, who's into her second inning of relief. That shot out to right, and right there's Paige Garrity. Line out, one out. Now that is Ariana Texas Tech will be taking on Clemson next. In a short time span, 3.30 Eastern time. Auburn will be facing Wisconsin next in this Invitational. That will not be until tomorrow. Yeah, has knocked in the only run for Tech. That was a sack fly back in the second. Tech swing, she did go around. That's a strikeout for Pinta, her third. And the Tech's down to their final out. I think Pinta has done a really good job coming in to uh, close his game out last inning and jumping ahead quick with that fastball. Uh, Ellen fouls it back and well out of play. See who Clemson throws. If it's Valerie Cagle, <laughs> then uh, that'll be a tough battle for Texas Tech. That is indeed who's in the circle for Clemson. You know you're going to see her bat. She's a two-way player that's outstanding on both sides of it. At least they are seeing someone that is throwing in the upper 60s with Penta, which is very similar to Valerie Cagle with Clemson, who can throw high 60s as well. One-two pitch from Maddie Penta. Somehow got a piece of that in on her hands. One 
one two count if I'm Ellen I'm thinking change bouncy ball to short gathered by Peralta and Auburn wins it over Texas Tech seven to one Auburn, a couple of big home runs today yeah I mean offensively I love to see it for Auburn I really do I know last year it was hard for them at times to score some runs so to be able to see it carry over from last weekend into today to put up seven runs a couple home runs on the day and that has to feel really good like the work that went into this grind of last season and the weight room work, the running, the conditioning, it all is now on display for these Auburn Tigers.